Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Welcome back to Papa Boris playing Guild of Dungeoneering, a really catchy and charming and eh, possibly slightly unfinished game that was released recently on Steam. Um, let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. So in the first video, we unlocked the Bruiser class. I recommend unlocking a class as your first thing because the chump really sucks. And it's not a matter of just like preference, it's just like any of the classes are better than the chump, just objectively. Uh, then I also unlocked uh, the Talisman of Helate, so for the first two battles, I'm going to have an extra hit point, which is significant because the first two battles are important um, a lot of the times, especially in missions with a time limit. Sometimes you kind of have to take a little risk in the first couple of battles, so having that extra hit point really helps. Next, I'm going to try to upgrade all of the uh, Tier 1 loot and basically start saving up money for the Barbarian try to get that as soon as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, in we go. Exploring. So let's talk about the missions. Basically, every uh, dungeon has a series of quests. The first time you go into a dungeon, you have to do the first quest. You can't do the second. If you die, you have to keep trying until you get the first quest finished. Once you finish the first quest, you cannot redo it. The next time you go to that dungeon, you must go to the second quest. When you finish the second quest, the dungeon is closed and you can't go back. So replay value in this game was a little bit sketchy. When I beat the game, it was weird. I got like 10,000 gold. I could finish upgrading my guild and then there was uh, literally nothing I could do. So it's a little weird how you can't replay dungeons. But as you this game as, treat this game as a linear thing, it's, it's pretty fun. So I picked some random dungeon. I forget what they all are. Here, it's a very easy mission. Um, you just have to defeat four monsters. Now, the reason I say that's easy is because there will be other missions later where the parameters are such that uh, you have to do some risky stuff. Here, I could just like wander back and forth across two rooms the whole time if I wanted to. I could fight just level one monsters the whole time if I wanted to. So let's go ahead and pick a nasty rat. If you were feeling gutsy, you could go for a skeleton. But notice it's got... 8 health. Um, it's, you know, not an easy fight, so I'm gonna leave that for later. By which I mean I'm not, because any cards you don't use get discarded automatically, but, you know, I'm gonna leave the idea of fighting a level 2 enemy for later. Okay, I don't think rats have any double damage, so I'm gonna just use this double block to stop the neurotoxin and deal a damage, because I'm spiky. Alright, this is an awesome situation, so I'm actually gonna deal 2 damage to the rat and take none in return, that's the ideal situation. Now it's biting, I can't block that, but I've got the health advantage now, so I should win this battle. And there it is. Okay, so when you're picking these loot op items, I gotta tell you, it matters what you pick. Like, you can lose the game, or loot, not, not the game, um, you can die as much as you want, it doesn't really matter, but you can lose missions by making poor choices. Um, for the Bruiser, if you're playing as him, you'll notice that what's pretty blatantly missing is any kind of double damage, which is significant if you're fighting a monster that gets ahead of you, you need some way to catch up. The Bruiser has a little bit of that built in with the ability to deal damage while blocking, but if monsters play on blockable cards or do too much damage for you to block or you just don't have your block cards at the right time, um, you need to find some way to get ahead. So that's why I keep taking this Kuppa. While these are certainly good cards, um, having magic damage, which I don't currently have, and having two at once is important for me. Okay, so um, I guess I'll just keep going down easy street here. Um, we'll play a scary spider, because I don't think we've actually fought a spider before. And sure, let's uh, throw another room down. And fight it. Now, uh, I could lose this. I have plenty of times in my life lost against uh, level 1 enemies while level 2, or level 2 enemies while level 3, and so on. So the spider's got the frail ability, which is incoming physical attacks get plus 1 damage. So this oi, humble oi, actually becomes pretty significant. I cannot stop this neurotox, and I didn't get any of my physical block. So um, I'm going to lose a card. When you lose cards, you lose them at random. So we'll go ahead and do the oi and hope I lose my shield. And I did. Oh, never mind. I wish I'd kept the shield. Now this thing is going to actually get to drain me a bit. So um, it's going to heal up. I will, however, deal two damage to, to the one that it heals, so I'm still okay. Aha, now I got my block, so I get a huge advantage. I'm going to deal two damage from uh, my physical attack because it's frail, and then I'm also going to block it fully, which will deal another damage, and that's why the spider, despite having three hit points, died all of a the sudden there. This is a good card, but that's not what I need. I need health and I need damage. I've already got Kappa. So let's go ahead and get health.
Okay, now you could uh, fight the Bear Owl or the Bandito, but there's no reason to, and whatever extra gold I might get from beating them is just not worth the risk of failing this mission and having to start all over. Again, losing isn't the end of the world because basically the adventurer who dies just gets put into a graveyard and then a new one comes in to, to, to take its place. Unlike, um, you know, Rogue Legacy or something where all the heroes are different or Darkest Dungeon where your heroes build up quirks and traits and stuff and then you have to re-level them up if you ever lose them. Uh, this game, it, one bruiser is as good as the next. So while we're very attached to Radney or whatever the hell his name is, um, once he dies and, oh yeah, Radney, once he dies and, you know, Oahu shows up, it's all the same jazz. So, um, dying is not the end of the world, but, you know, from a time perspective, I don't want to have to bother dying. Okay, so I can, I get a heal regardless. Do I want to block or do I want to uh, deal a damage? For the bruiser, that's an easy choice. The block is better because blocking is damage. At least in these early fights where, um, do I want to fight a level two monster just for fun? Let's see if I can do that. Just to just to have a little bit of a challenge. Of course, if I lose this, then what I will have done will be a mistake. But I'm hoping that I can beat this. I do have about as good items as I could hope for. And um, other than other than the lack of a weapon, I should be able to beat a rat man. Okay, so this is actually really nice. So I'm gonna holy seal. It blocks the damage, which deals the damage, and then he takes another damage, and then I heal myself up by one. So that gives me a very big heart advantage. All right, this guy is content to beat himself up, and I'm fine with just blasting him down and taking all the heat because I'm going to win. Okay, so that was a nice little challenge at the end there. One weird thing about the game is um, when you beat the final enemy, you actually don't pick up any gems that were lying on its square. So I don't know why that is, but that's how it is, so I don't get that diamond, unfortunately. We got 61 gold, so it's time to expand the guild, and that means unlocking some loot. Now, if you were playing casually, you could like be like, "Oh, let me try, let me try this talisman, or, or let me try the cat burglar." But uh, really, you know, the cat burglar is no better than the bruiser. It's uh, all these are about the same level of quality. I mean, I'm sure people will find that some are better than others. I think it's a style thing. But really, assuming you've got the best class unlocked or one that's good enough, unlocking another one is just throwing money away. It gives you more options, but it doesn't increase your power. Unlocking this stuff actually increases your power. So we're gonna take a quick look. Um, I'm gonna try to use my memory. So the curio shop has got some interesting stuff. I do like the staff and the mask. The femur I pretty much never take because it has the stupidity and the stuff that it, it adds for it aren't really worth it. The woodworker, like the heater shield, it gives you a good magic card and health. Crossbows and nifty gives you a couple of cards that um, deal quick damage. But the thing about the crossbow is those damage cards are only one damage and for the bruiser I want more than one. Hand Axe just gives you uh, some nice blocking and damage, which is fine as well. We've got some health and healing, some arcane power, some armor up, and then uh, some magic power there. And here, uh, the Scale Mails gives a lot of health, which I really like. Got some, some And some extra health from the helmet. I'm going to grab the Blacksmith. While these cards kind of, I, th I think, uh, later in the game are the ones that start to become the less ap least appealing. Until I learn otherwise, I'm just going to open up all of the loot eventually to um, reduce my odds of finding the basic crappy items to a small number as possible. Um, and since I'm locking everything anyway, I'll just go for what seems more helpful now, which is extra health. Okay, so we can now play a couple of approaches. We can either go to all the other places and do the level 1 missions, or we can go back to this place and try the level 2 mission. Now, the nice thing about doing level 2 mission is that you get a much bigger gold reward, but it's also harder. If I were to do the level 1 missions in the other places, then I could save up some more gold, perhaps unlock some better items, and have a better shot at doing the level 2s. I think, generally, it is worth it to try to do level 1s kind of all, all in a batch, and then go to level 2s. But once you get pretty confident, perhaps you can you know just go through a dungeon to have that satisfaction of doing it all at once. Okay, so this level has a fountain. The next monster that you fight has the predictable trait. There are bad fountains as well, and oh man, are some of the bad ones really, really bad. However, since the objective is just to defeat three monsters, we don't really need to worry about going to that fountain. Let's just uh, fight a fire, but I don't think we fought any of those yet. This corridor is really unhelpful, so we'll just end the turn. So if you were to do this really slowly, you could just build up dungeon paths up to this fountain. 
and then kill that little one little enemy there and then uh, have a fountain for your next fight. But uh, I don't really see the point of doing that. I feel like I'll be okay. Now this imp has a really good card. It does a magic and a physical damage. So um, that gave it an advantage to start with. Now this does not block the flare. So we're at equal health, which is scary. I have to find a way to get ahead. And here it is. I'm going to block this spark, which will deal a spiky damage. I'm going to drop the fire imp down to be equal with me. Okay. Now this is a scary moment because... Um, the Fire Imp now reshuffles its deck, and it, it, it actually got this fiery weapon. Now, I want to talk about this. So this is a case of uh, decision-making in the game mattering a lot. If I didn't have the Talisman that gave me an extra health, I would almost certainly lose this fight. Because what I'd have to do if I had two health is I'd have to do this to block the physical part. The magic part would re reduce me to one health, and then I would have to hope that the Fire Imp got... Um, uh, stupidity as its next card, because if it got any sort of damage and I didn't get a blocking card from the top of my deck, I'd lose. As it is, though, I can actually eat this two damage, survive with one health, and finish it off with a humble oi. So, that talisman for the health, I really think it's, it's pretty much the best one. Okay, now here we actually got a new item, the Soldier's Helmet. There's also Kappa and the straight jacket. Now, for one health, I'd rather take the... which I don't actually know what I'd rather take. Yeah, I think this is the only X fancy helmet that I've unlocked, so I should probably take the helmet. But I could also just take this extra damage. I'm going to take the damage because I think like, that's going to make a bigger difference in the battles than one health. Since I um, don't have to fight anything super hard, I think the extra damage makes a bigger difference. So um, let's fight another Fire Imp, I guess. And then we'll fight whatever that is. Is that also a Fire Imp? Yeah, maybe I should have done a Spider for some variety. <laughs> and then we'll end it up. Okay, so I have a big health advantage against this person. I also now have Fire Blasts, so I should be okay. Let's get an advantage. I don't think this person has any double magic attacks, so we'll just use that to block it. Here again is our, the Fiery Weapon, which was quite intimidating at this stage. Later in the game, there's going to be monsters with ridiculous cards right from the get-go as you enter a dungeon. Of course, you're going to have ridiculous cards, too. Here's a bit of a bad flip. So wooden stool I don't like at all, and it would also replace my cuppa, which I don't want. There's the cuppa again. So we're going to take the straight jacket. That's actually fine. An extra health is good. So I'm going to be fighting a level 1 monster. Ooh, I could fight a level 2. I don't want to fight a level 3. There's no reason to risk the mission. But let's go ahead and do a ghost, just because I'm... Ah, never mind. See, this person just really wants to fight the little guy. I don't have any gold to place on the ghost to entice him, so... Through no fault of my own, we're going to uh, have to fight another level 1 to finish off this mission. Okay, so here's a spark. I don't get my magic block, but we do have Fire Blast. Just gives me the advantage right away. There's that scary fiery weapon. There's no point blocking it. I would still take a damage, and I wouldn't deal any spiky damage because the attack wouldn't be fully blocked. However, I have a little bit of a cushion. For my item, this is the third fight, so the talisman is no longer working. The talisman is only for the of plus one health is only for the first two fights, but uh, that that soldier's or that straight jacket gave me a little bit of a cushion there. Okay, so 28 gold, kind of meager. I'm really not high enough to unlock anything yet, so let's go ahead and do the final place and do its level one mission. Alright, so this one's a little bit trickier. Right now, I'm headed into uh, the Fountain of Decay. This is a really, really bad fountain. It makes it so that when you take two damage in a fight, you actually take an extra damage. Now, the Bruiser, you know, can kind of deal with it because most monsters don't do two damage at once. But I'd still rather not go in there if I can avoid it. Unfortunately, I have another Mysterious Fountain, which could be good or bad. I don't really want to risk it. And it points down anyway, so it doesn't actually help me get into these rooms. My objective is to get these two large chests. You have to think a little bit carefully. There's a level 3 monster here, level 2 here. So I really do want to go for this one first, and then that one. Let's not put the Mystery Fountain connecting them, because then I might be stuck with the Decay or something really bad against this level 3 enemy. So what I'm going to do is, even though it's not ideal, I'm going to put a room over here. The Bruiser is still trying to go into this damn fountain. Well, putting a goblin here, lure him away. Thank God. Okay, so a little bit of an awkward hand size. This mission doesn't have a time limit. That's not going to happen until later. So I can dick around for a while, just getting a good hand of cards. Okay, so here, um, this is a level one creature, but it has six health. 
luckily I do as well, so that's good, and it's going to hurt itself. So we're going to stay equal. Each of us is going to take two damage. I do need to get ahead. Unfortunately, I didn't get a blocking card, so we're going to stay equal. And this is getting a little bit scary, but I got to get out of here. So now this is Wrecking Ball Powerhouse. I'm going to deal actually um, three damage to him. One for the damage of the attack, one for the shield, and then one is going to damage itself, and that just ends the fight. But if I hadn't gotten that card in time, then, um, you know, I might have been close, and the extra health I started with was a nice cushion to have. So I can get the blocking card, but as before, what I really need is multiple sort of points of damage, so I'm going to do that first. Man, it is just determined to go into this damn fountain. So we got a room, which is good. I'm going to need something good to be able to bypass this fountain. Let's see if I can have him fight. Let's do for a variety of scary spider. Good. So this bruiser's smart. He's got some brain, not just all brawn. Oh, I never talked about movement. You can move two spaces through spaces you've already explored, but if you're walking into fog, then you can only move one space. You can move through a space we've explored and then into a fog space. So it's just if the fog is your first space, then you only get to move once. Okay, so we're going to stay equal here. He deals one and heals one. I deal two. I don't have my blocking card, unfortunately, to get ahead of this claw, which is unfortunate. But he is frail, this spider. So every incoming physical damage deals an extra damage to him. So um, he's going to heal one of the two damage I dealt. And we got this get out of here, which will finish him off. One of the best things about the bruiser is that the bruiser starts with that uh, deal one damage, block one damage card, which is really good on some of these early missions. So shift is fine, but I would like some damage. Do I have it? I do. I could get this blocking card for healing, but I really don't think I'm going to need more blocking than I started with. I have a double physical block, a double magic block, and a, um, what's his face, uh, block one, attack one card. That's, that's plenty of blocking. All right, let's put the gem out here. Um, any card you don't play gets discarded, so you might as well use it. I didn't get anything I could use to make that connection. I don't want to walk into this fountain. Um, although, Decay is one of those things that starts off not mattering that much, since most monsters can't deal two damage to it once, but later in the game it's like really, really terrible. Aha, here we got this to start with. So it's a two health advantage I get right off the bat. Keep in mind, though, the Fury. you got to kind of manage that. Here I want to just push it past the halfway mark as fast as possible. Okay, so this headbutt, you got to think carefully. This is actually going to deal three damage to me. Because one, two, and then fury. Now, I do have six health, so I'm okay. If I didn't have that extra health, uh, I would lose. Now, that's not the health from the talisman. That This was actually not my first fight. This was my third. But you can just see how much that extra health, uh, how much of a difference it made. So we got uh, Shimmering Cloak. Just some magic damage and card draw. We got the mail, which is kind of nice for the extra health, but I don't like the stupidity card. The repel might not always be useful either. I could take the headband. So the headband gives me a little bit of blocking and healing, but it doesn't uh, force me to take any stupidity. Okay. Well, I'll put a mysterious fountain here. Actually, hang on a second. This is actually bad because I I'm not. I don't want to fight a bandito, do I? Eep. Hmm. I don't want to put a Mysterious Fountain here, because if it's bad, then I'm going to have to suck a uh, bad fountain anyway. But let's fight a Bandito, sure. Hopefully he'll change course. He does not change course. Okay. Well, I'm going to end my turn. I don't want to fight a Bandito. So if you fight a monster on the fountain, then the fountain's effect tech takes place after the fight. So not with the fight that you were having, but with the next one. Okay. If I fought a Bear Owl, I would actually level up. But I don't want to fight a Barrel while I'm decaying. I don't really want to fight a Null while I'm decaying either because it's going to deal extra damage from being infuriated. And it's going to um, deal an extra damage to me because I'm decaying. So I actually think I have a good chance of losing either of these fights. I don't want to fight the Bandito either. Because it's, it's, it's my level of a monster and I'm not really like overpowered. So what I'm going to do is put a gold pouch here. I was lucky to have gotten this. And that's just going to stop me from walking into the Bandito. Unfortunately, the problem now is I'm probably going to fight this Bandito anyway. Okay, unless I can get the Skeleton. So what I need is I need a fight that is with some monster that isn't a hard one. Basically, Fountains last for one turn, so for the next turn, 
um, I have decay, meaning if I ever take two damage at once, I take an extra damage. And while that's not super likely to happen at these low-level fights where most cards of the monsters only deal one damage, it's not exactly what it's going to take. Now, the skeletons uh, got this effect brittle. If it, if it takes four damage at once, it takes two extra damage. So it pr practically dies if you can deal four damage to it. Unfortunately, uh, there's no way for me to realistically ever deal four damage. So it's going to give me a head blow. I sadly did not get a blocking card. However, I am kind of okay on health. Here I'm going to block the spook to deal a damage to it. Oh, but then he has a drain. Oh, that sucks. So we're, we're going to stay equal on this one. We each take one damage. There's another damage. Okay, so another fire blast. So we're again going to stay equal. So this is uh, close. I'm one health ahead of it. And here he's got an anger that's really good. So with this, I get all three damage done at once. Okay, so that got rid of my decay. I can now um, lose Flame Lash and in exchange get a Magic Block. That's actually a good trade. Let me just see what I have here. I can get Dice, which is two physical damage, or three if you're if the enemy is using an unblockable effect and Stiletto is below the others. I'm going to actually do this. I don't mind losing the speed. It hasn't really come up yet, uh, but the extra blocking seems like it's useful. Okay, so... I could fight a bear owl. I'm gonna have to fight a bear owl anyway, so I might as well fight one now. Uh, I don't think I'm ever gonna get this diamond, unfortunately, but it's not that big of a deal, so whatever, we'll just let it go. Oh, hang on, I'll put a room there. Oh, geez, what? It's gonna go this way. Well, that was unexpected. Luckily, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, it's a bear owl um, with a diamond. Or actually, this is a chest versus a diamond. Well, whatever. So let's check this diamond down. Um, yeah, I'll just fight the barrel. So the barrel has fury, but relatively few hit points for a level three enemy. So I need to get it to, so it's got seven health. I want it to stop on four health and then push it down. I don't want it to jump from five to three because then I'll take an extra fury attack. So let me stop the toxin and, and heal myself as well. I'm gonna use this block because there might not be a chance to use it later. And I'm gonna just now deal one damage rather than two because I want it to stop at four health before I deal two damage to it. This reduces uh, the amount of fury attacks it gets. I lost my good card, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and uh, notice I'm taking two damage, by the way, from this claw. Let's deal one damage to him. And because I got enough healing and blocking, I actually have enough health to withstand an attack. Now, this is very important. All card effects are, just, are resolved simultaneously, which means that if I were to attack it, it would go down to zero, but then it would gain two, so it actually go back up to two, which I don't really want. So I'm just gonna use the block, and then it blocks the attack, stops the healing, and gives them one spiky damage. Now, now I'm not saying that was like a super hard thing to see. I'm just saying you, you did not want to click a random card there because it did matter what you played. So we could do this, which replaces some of my offense with some defense. I'm not a fan of that. We can just add more offense or uh, some extra health. I think extra health would seal the deal. This is a really easy thing I have to do now. Uh, but by the way, whenever you find a chest, you actually get an extra card. I don't want that. That's just worse. That's pretty much worse. Okay, so we're taking some gold. And I could put a diamond down. Okay, I will actually do this. And I could actually fight an enemy to get some more gold. But uh, again, it really just isn't worth it. So we'll just pick up the diamond. And now I'm level 4. The reason for that is I was level 3 and I fought a level 3 enemy. So I'm going to now fight a level 2, en uh, t two enemy as level 4. When you kill something of the same level you are, you level up. So being level 3 and killing level 3 made me level 4. So I should be really overpowered. Now zombies do have this decay thing. Um, which accommodates for the insane amount of health they have. And this is a level 2 enemy that has 9 health. I mean, it has more health than the level 3 enemy I just fought. But it has decay, so whenever it takes 2 damage at once, it uh, loses an extra health. Now, the bruisers are not the best at dealing more than 1 damage at a time. But with cases like this, it's actually going to take 4 damage rather than 3. Unfortunately, Drain is going to give it some health back, but... Um, I still dealt three total damage to it because if it's decay, then it heals back one. Here, with darkness, I want to do this. One of the magical damage would have been blocked if I had done fire blast. And here I can do whatever I want and it will die to its own headbutt. Okay, 
So I'm gonna open up a chest. Now here, the only thing that would matter is if you could take something that you already have, you get the gold instantly. If you, if you do this, you get a card, but the mission's over, so you wouldn't actually get that gold. So I took the glyph to get the two instant gold. The chest open doesn't even matter what I get, and I got 58 gold, okay. So that'll do it for this video. Let's go ahead and, oh, three gold shy. Man, had I gotten one more diamond, I could actually expand my guild twice. And actually, maybe that would have mattered, I don't know. Maybe that extra loot item would have made all the difference. So I'm pretty happy with uh, my choice to get the blacksmith. Let's go ahead and see what else I want. So we have some health here and healing, some magic power, some more blocking and some more magic power. This, I like the heater shield. That's a pretty good one. Fire two is a pretty good card. I don't remember what it is, but I think it's good. Uh, I remember it being pretty good. I remember taking that a lot. Masquerade Mask is a card I've taken a lot. Winged Staff I've taken a fair amount, but I really hate this Troll Femur. I think I've never taken it, so we'll hold off on those. Let's, uh, what did I say I wanted? Yes, the Heater Shield. Okay, let's try this. So we'll build that. And what time is it? How are we doing on time? All right, let's do one more mission. We had a uh, all level one mission so far. So let's go back to the first place and try to do the big mission here. Okay, so this is a tricky mission, as you can see. There's a lot of map features. There's a bad fountain here, and then this orc warlord is gonna leap into this space. So what you really wanna do is try to bypass this fountain because you do not wanna go into your boss fight with two stupidity cards. There is, however, no time limit on this mission. So I got all shitty room cards um, and level two monsters. There's no reason to risk my life fighting a level two monster. I'm just gonna say, fuck you, and uh, get a better set of cards. Okay, now we got some level one up monsters and some good cards, so that's more like it. I'm gonna put the uh, corridor here. Oh, I can't actually do that until I connect it. Okay, so we gotta do this and this. Now I have a choice. I can either put a level one monster down and get my level up, or I can put this corridor down and make sure that I have the uh, path to bypass the warlord. And both have their risks. If I don't draw a level one monster next turn, and I don't fight one now, that I might be forced to fight this Knoll, which is a level two. That's pretty much, I don't think there's any way I can fight, I can win that unless I get the perfect distribution of cards. However, if I don't get a thing to put here, then I might end up being forced to go through this fountain of stupidity. I'm gonna take the ladder risk because I do wanna level up before fighting this thing for sure. And hopefully I can dick around and go back and forth um, before I have to put that other map piece down. Okay, this is actually a tough start. So we've got a spook, which I can't get past. Spiders are frail. So I think it'll take one damage. Yeah, it's one damage because this got added to because it's frail. Unfortunately, I cannot block that drain, but we're still gonna stay equal on health here because I dealt two, it healed one, and it dealt me one. Okay, now I got a blocking card, so I get a head here. Drop it back down by one and I get ahead by three now. Spiky, my own damage, and then the, the frailty of the spider, so that went nicely. Here's a new card, the Arcane Wand. Well, I guess it's a little bit underwhelming. These are good cards, but like I've said a bunch of times, I think the first priority I always have is getting some more damage, because the Bruiser's starting kit has some pretty good blocking capabilities. Okay, well, let's go ahead and fight a skeleton. Put a diamond on it. There's really no reason to wait on the diamond. I don't. I didn't get a thing to connect that with, unfortunately. I could have, I don't know, I guess I could have put the skeleton next to me and um, put the diamond on it. That probably would have kept me away from there. That would have given me an extra chance. Now here, it's a good thing I started with an extra health because the skeleton starts with a health advantage against me. Let's stop the draining from happening. And I, have, I do have my one card in the deck that perfectly answers head blow. So that's good. So now I have the health advantage. Now Perry's a significant card, but Kappa's coming in handy here. We each deal two damage to each other, and I'm fine with that because I started out with, with the lead where that was concerned. Now, if he has any more parries in his deck, I guess I don't really want to use my blocking card on this humble little strike. All right, and now the battle's over. So we level up to three. Okay, let's see what we got here. So I could use either of these weapons, some more damage. Some more damage and a little bit of blocking, and this is blocking but not much damage. So let's actually take the cooking pot 
This gives me another bash card, the uh, block one, deal one, which seems to be pretty good in these early missions. All right, we finally got a room. And here, I'm gonna put a bandito down to make sure I don't go into this damn fountain, or I don't know. I mean, I might still go into the fountain, which would suck. If he chose to go to the fountain, and then he chose to go up to the warlord, I'd be fighting with two stupidity cards, which could definitely make the difference between winning and losing. All right, the knoll has furry. Furry. <laughs> no, it has fury. You should always pay attention to this and think about how much damage you're going to deal, because you do not want it to end up on three health. You want it to end up on four, and then you want to deal two damage at once. So with headbutt, it's going to take one damage, and then it's going to take one damage from me. That's two. I will not fully block the attack, so I'm not going to deal a spiky damage, so I'm going to put it perfectly on four health exactly where I want it. Then there's the strike. I want to deal two damage with flame lash. Now, waiting for this to kill it, Remember, the speed means that if it was at 2 health, it would die instantly, even before it did its thing. Um, but it's just not worth it at all, because I wanted to have it as, as few fury attacks as possible. Now, this is not going to kill it, because it's actually going to deal 2 damage, since it's in fury mode. And it might cause me to discard my combat card, which it did. So now, if I don't draw another combat card, this starts to get awkward. Luckily, he drew headbutt. So it's going to deal 3 damage to me if I hadn't gotten the blocking card, so I would have survived. And then it would have self-killed itself. Self-killed itself. Good, good talking, Boris. Oh my god, Shimmering Cloak. Uh, so this is really awesome. I don't need, you know, I don't actually know how this works. Uh, I don't know how it is that I got Ignite. Fire 3, because the Cloak does not have Fire 3. Oh, Fire 1. I see. Oh, that makes sense. I didn't actually realize it worked this way. Okay, so the Shimmering Cloak does not always give me the Ignite card, but because this has Fire 1, and that has Fire 1, and I, and I guess this has Fire 1, you add up all my fires, and you get up to Fire 3. So that gives me this amazing card, Ignite. So you deal 1 magic damage, and then it, as long as it goes through, you actually uh, deal the monster 1 magic damage every single round for the rest of the entire fight. So it's kind of spectacular. Um... Wow, I did not really realize that that's how that worked. So basically, the, the fire skills kind of add up. So if you take a lot of the same one, you can build up. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, the Bandino has one minus HP if it's in a dead end. He's not in a dead end here. So um, might as well use Flame Lash because nothing else would have done any good against that stagger. I don't have any blocking. So we're going to have to just punch it and lose a card. Health is equal, which is a little bit scary. But Bash was an amazing top deck. Now I get an advantage of two against him. If I hadn't gotten bashed there, I could really have gone the wrong way. This is a really good top deck as well. I actually go past his block. Now the problem is, if he deals two damage here like that, uh, I lose. If this were the fast fire damage, then I would have actually killed the bandito before he could attack me. But it wasn't, so I died. Well, that happens. It's possible that had I taken a different card or a different loot item, I could have done better there. Um, it's also possible that um, I was just unlucky in that final fight and there's nothing I could have done. So goodbye, Radney the Bruiser. You can kind of go into your graveyard and see what, pe what people have. This guy made it through five runs, got a lot of gold, a lot of, got a lot of kills. There it is. All right, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon with some more Hearthstone and Guild of Engineering. Take care.